Hello, it's Chino here. If you like aggressive openings, you're in the right place. Today I'd like to explore the Philidor defense, specifically the systems where Black plays g5. This is a typical position that Black strives for in this system. Typically Black would play knight d7 to f8 to g6 and f4 with some attacking chances. It's a risky opening for black, but I'll show ways for black to have some fun if white plays some suboptimal moves. I'll also try and highlight some of the dangers for black and how to sidestep them. After e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3 to defend the e4 pawn, knight b to d7, knight f3, the most popular move in this position e5, bishop c4, as all other moves are a little bit passive except for perhaps g4, which is outside the scope of this video, bishop to e7, castles kingside. It's worth noting here that white has some interesting continuations, which shouldn't cause black too much problems if he knows what to do. The first of these alternatives is bishop takes f7, check. Um, but after king takes f7, knight g5 check, king g8 should be fine for black. For example, after knight to e6, queen to e8, knight takes c7, queen g6 is a key move because knight times a8 would be met by queen takes g2, rook to f1, pawn takes d4, queen takes d4, Knight e5 threatening a fork after knight f3 check. And already black has a big advantage. One sample variation goes f4, knight f to g4, preparing bishop h4 check. And if say something like queen to d5 check, knight to f7, queen to c4 attacking the c8 bishop. Bishop h4 check would come anyway, and after king d1, bishop to e6 to deflect the queen from the f1 rook would be crushing for black. For example, queen e2 to stay on the diagonal would be met by knight e3 check, and if bishop takes e3, bishop to g4 winning the queen. Going back to the position after um, bishop to e7, White can also try knight to g5. In this position, black would simply castle kingside, and after bishop takes f7, rook takes f7, knight e6, queen to e8, knight takes c7, forking the queen on the rook, queen to d8, knight takes a8. b5 is a key move simply threatening bishop to a6 and capturing the knight on a8. It's worth noting here that if knight captures on b5, this would be met by queen to a5 check. And after say knight to c3, knight takes e4. And if castles, knight takes c3, pawn takes c3, followed by bishop to b7, when black should be better. Now back to the main line after bishop to e7. So castles kingside is a main move for white. But here I prefer to play h6 instead of the commonly played c6. This rules out knight g5 once and for all. The key seven moves for white in this position are h3, rook to e1 and queen to e2. It's important to note, however, that h3 would usually be combined with rook e1 and or queen e2, so has no independent significance. In this video, we'll focus mainly on the lines where white plays h3 at some point, because these are the most promising for black. I'll point out opportunities for black to deviate if h3 is not played. By far the most popular move in this position is rook e1 but before we look at rook e1 i'd like to look at the second most popular move which is queen e2 
Now black was spawned c6. This is played after almost all of white's options on move 7. c6 immediately threatens to expand on the queen side with b5. Hence white usually plays pawn to a4. It's worth noting a tricky transposition for white here where he plays rook to d1 first instead of a4. And in this position b5 would be a mistake because of pawn takes e5, pawn takes e5, knight takes e5. And if pawn takes c4, knight takes c6 would lead to a crushing attack for white with e5, knight takes e7, knight d5 to follow. Hence, after rook to d1, I recommend that black plays queen to c7 first, and after a4, transpose to the positions we'll be examining shortly. Now back to the position after c6, a4 to prevent b5, queen to c7, and h3. In this position, black can continue with the standard setup by playing g5. White has two options here, pawn takes e5 and rook to d1. Now rook to d1 would be met by knight to f8 and if pawn takes e5, pawn takes e5, bishop e3, knight g6 and black has achieved his standard setup. Black would have some attacking chances with knight to f4 and ideas with pawn to g4 opening up the file on the white king. If we go back to the position after h3 at pawn to g5, white can go pawn takes e5 first, pawn takes e5, and if h4, which has been tried in a couple of games, then black can simply respond knight to h5. Note that instead of knight to h5, g4 would be a positional mistake because after knight to h2, h5, rook d1 would give white a small advantage. Tracking back to the position after h4, after knight h5, pawn takes g5, pawn takes g5, bishop takes g5. Seemingly winning a pawn will be met by knight to b6, when surprisingly, the evaluation of this position is that black is better. For example, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7 would allow the black queen to infiltrate on the h-file. Hence, white could try bishop to e3, but then after knight takes c4, queen takes c4, bishop e6, queen e2, castles queen side. Black would have the g and h files for an attack against the white king. So going back to the position after um, move 6 and um, pawn to h6, instead of queen e2 which we've just looked at, rook e1 is the most played move in this position. Again we meet rook e1 by c6 and after a4 to stop the pawn expansion of the queen side, black will continue in the standard way with queen to c7. And after h3, the standard move g5. If we go back to the position after queen 7, instead of h3, it's worth noting that white could play pawn to b3. In this position, I recommend that black does not continue with the standard setup of g5 because that would weaken the a1 to h8 diagonal. Similarly, knight to h4 will prevent black from playing g5 because of knight to f5 when it's obvious that there are holes in black's position. After knight to h4 I recommend instead pawn takes d4 and after queen takes d4 knight e5 and after the bishop moves and um, castles kingside with a roughly equal position. Now back to the main line with h3 and pawn to g5. Bishop e3 introduces a trap for white. 
it would be wrong for black to continue with the standard setup with knight to f8 because this will be met by pawn takes e5 and after pawn takes e5 knight takes e5 brilliant move queen takes e5 bishop to d4 and after queen a5 e5 would be a crushing attack for white this is worth studying some more but white has a clearly winning advantage hence after bishop to e3, I recommend black changes tact and play the move g4 first, trying to open the g file. Because after pawn takes g4, knight takes g4, the bishop would have to retreat. And if the bishop doesn't retreat, say for example queen d2, knight d to f6 would be a good continuation. And after say something like pawn takes e5, pawn takes e5, rook a to d1, bishop d7 preparing to castle queen side would be good for black. A sample variation would go something like a5, knight takes e3, and after queen takes e3, knight to g4, and if the queen moves to d2, castles queen side with good attacking chances for black. For example, after, say, a natural move such as bishop takes f7, bishop to c5, with a threat on f2, rook to f1, defending the pawn on f2, would be met by knight takes f2, and after rook takes f2, bishop to g4 would be crushing, because the bishop on f7 and queen on d2 are both attacked. Now back to the standard position after um, pawn to g5, instead of beat bishop to e3, white can try knight to h2, and this has been seen in a couple of games, and after knight to f8, knight to g4, in this position I recommend bishop takes g4, and after h takes g4, a suggested computer improvement is queen to c8, instead of knight to g6, the point being, if white responds with pawn to f3, this will be strongly met by h5, opening lines against the white king. Bishop g5, for example, would be met by pawn takes g4. And after something like bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, pawn takes g4, e takes d4, threatening the knight. Queen f3 threatening the bishop, knight d7 defending the, the bishop. A counter attacking move like e5 would be met with bishop takes e5 with a clear advantage for black. Black isn't worried about a check on f7 because the king would find a safe haven after king to d8 to c7. So we see from these positions that black gets some good attacking chances in many variations in a Philidor defense with g5 however it's worth pointing out before you start playing this opening to study one more continuation after the standard move g5 and that's the move d5 this is one of the critical responses to black setup because after saying knight to f8 pawn to a5 and knight to g6 a6 would cause black some problems. In this position, I think black can just about hold a balance after b5. And if bishop b3, king to f8. The point being that if instead of king to f8, b4, white would play bishop to a4. And if bishop to d7, pawn takes d6, bishop takes d6 knight to d5 knight takes d5 queen takes d5 interesting move rook to c8 bishop to e3 would be a clear advantage for white now going back to um, the position after d5 knight to f8 a5 knight to g6 a6 and b5 Bishop b3, king f8 here, and I think black just about holds the balance after pawn takes c6, queen takes c6, knight d5, 
and bishop to e6 intending knight f4 on the next move. So to summarize, the Philidor defense with pawn to g5 gives black some interesting positions with attacking prospects. However, black needs to be familiar with some of the dangerous tries by white and needs to avoid going into the g5 variation if white omits h3.